Hello everyone, I'm Colin Kinnett. Today's theme is bad ideas in the workshop and today I'm going to show you a number of them that I don't like and I'm going to show you why and this is one of them and I'm going to show you this one in a few minutes but let's get started. Here's a little safety item that I really dislike on these table saw sleds and that's a little piece of plastic that you would put over top to cover the blade. It looks like a good idea but here's the problem. I've taught enough courses to know that new, some new woodworkers, after the blade is turned off, after they've cut a piece of wood, they have this need to have to go in and flick the little pieces out of the way uh, when the blade's still spinning and it scares me. I actually watch for it now. Um, but the problem with that is that wherever this blade might be and wherever those pieces might get to, their hand sometimes is going to be underneath this guard here. And if something would happen, if, if the little piece flicked or something like that and startled them, um, they can't get their their hand up quickly here that you need to be able to lift your hand quickly out of the way of this and this inhibits that so for that reason I don't like this and when you're on the table saw you're always 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 using eyeglass protection or eye protection um, so this is really a level that you really don't need and it could be a potential safety hazard. So what I've made up here is just a little hole drilling jig and in order to make this I just used a pegboard and I didn't want to drill holes every inch or so. In this case I wanted to drill them whatever this is, three inches or something. So I've got two dowels so I know my spacing and the third one is a hole. So let me show you quickly how it works. So we make the first hole. I'm just going to make a random hole here. And now I put the first dowel in that hole. If I can find it, there it is there. And now I just drill the next hole. And now I can take this jig and move it and it gives me an exact spacing. And now I can drill the next hole. And now I can just keep going, moving on, moving on all the way down. And you can see how it's getting easier every time I move it. But here's the problem with these. See this that I'm using? This is a twist bit. And what that means is every time it goes into a piece of wood like this, and this is fairly soft wood because it's just a demonstration, it makes that hole a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger. So on your first pass, you might be okay, but if you're making a pairing one and maybe you're making four of them because it might be the inside of a cupboard because these are going to be pins that are for adjustable shelving, what's going to happen near the end is this hole is going to be so worn that you'll never get these pins to align up. Your shelves are going to be wobbling back and forth. So the best thing, and I've talked about this before, is to use one of these little centering bits like that. And if you're going to use it, you could use it on pegboard. And the, the nice idea with this is because it centers on the hole, look at the drill bit doesn't even touch, it's not even touching the, um, the hole of the pegboard. So you can use this all day long and as long as you've got pins, now you might have to enlarge these holes depending on the centering bit. These are called VIX bits um, and that way you can make uh, a perfect, it's going to be a perfect match. This is just not a great idea. Okay, back to the slab flattening jig, and this is a mock-up, and in this case what it consists of is a couple of long bar clamps, and these are fairly long, but you can get longer ones, and in the middle of it, of course, is the router, and the router sits on some sort of a platen, and the, whole, the way this works, of course, is that you move the whole router to here, and then you go back and forth, move it down a bit, and back and forth, and so on, until the slab is entirely flattened. And you, we use this because we don't have 14-inch, um, 18-inch wide planers or jointers to actually flatten a slab like this. So we, this is the kind of jig that we make to do that. And typically you'll use a, a bit, something similar to this, a big wide flat uh, router bit. 
So the reason I don't like this, and I, you'll notice that I have this set up, and I'm going to show you a close-up of this in a second, but this is set up right now so that this part, and this is just a, a measuring stick is all this is, set up right at the top of my router. And the reason I don't like this is that when you are flattening a slab, you need to put pressure down on the router, and you need to put in some cases, depending on the type of wood you're cutting, you need to put a significant amount of pressure on. And what happens with these bars is they bend. So what I'm going to do, uh, when I do a close-up of this area in here, I'm going to put pressure on the router so that you can see. And if you look at this, you'll notice that it's just barely above the top of the router. So you're going to be able to see how much flex there is in there. And we don't want any flex because when the, the router flexes like this, what happens is you get little grooves in the slab. And I know that because I've done it. My, the first jig that I made, there was flex in it and you end up with a, a slab that's got all these little grooves so you really haven't solved the problem um, then you have to set the whole thing up and do the whole thing all over again it's very tedious to do that so you want to do it right the first time so let me do a close-up and show you how much flex is in these pipes okay so there you can see i'm just barely above the router now i'm going to push down on it as though i was cutting a slab and watch how the watch the distance See that? When you're pushing down, that's the amount of variable that you've got with those bars in there. So if you decide you're going to be working with slabs and you want something to flatten it, this is probably one jig that you'll want to avoid. There's lots of good ones out there. Uh, this probably is not the best. Here's a bad idea when it comes to making your own filler and that is to use sawdust some people use the sawdust from their sand or the bag of their sander get a nice fine sand and then they'll mix that with glue and you end up with this globby mess uh, which you can then fill knot holes or cracks whatever you have the problem with this glue when you mix it up and after it dries it gets very hard and it has a degree a high degree of waterproof so that if you want to stain or dye the wood after the wood around will will dye fine but where you have put the filler in it doesn't penetrate this because the glue inhibits it from uh, penetrating that and what you end up with I did a video on this not long ago and you end up with wood that has a very light you can see where the the stain doesn't penetrate the wood and what happens is you get these white areas that stand out like a sore thumb if you're going to do anything you want a darker a darker filler because wood always has a, 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 a dark streak in it somewhere so you can sort of match that to a degree by using a darker stain or dye um, sometimes even a CA glue in a black or even a dark brown um, can can fill that but the only value that this is is if you're painting because paint will cover all of that and it won't matter well, that concludes my video for today. All sorts of tips and tricks that we see in the workshop. We see them online. We see them in magazines. We see them in books. Uh, people tell us about them. Not all of them are good ideas. And I know I've tried so many of them and found out that, no, they really don't work as well as what we might be led to believe. The other thing that I talked about in this video was filling you know we all make mistakes and what do you do how do you fill cracks how do you fill mistakes and things like that and I did a video on this on just on this different kinds of fillers and how they react with different kinds of woods and what they look like um, you may be interested that video will pop up here you can go and have a look at that it's been a pretty popular video and for those of you who are working with wood and looking for some kind of a, a material that you can use to fill holes this might be a video that you'll want to have a look at I'm Colin Kinnett for Woodwork Web thanks for watching